Hi, hi everybody and welcome to part two of my video blog from London Film and Comic Con. If you haven't seen it, check out part one which covers the Friday um, and a bit of an introduction. Uh, it explains why I'm out here and apologises for the noise and stuff like that but go and watch that. That one's not too long, it's only going to be about 20-25 minutes-ish. Uh, this one will probably be a bit longer, sorry. But as I say, this covers the Saturday of London Film and Comic Con. Um, this was going to be a busy day. My plan, uh, I had eight photo shoots and then my plan was to get the Saturday only guests and then try and pick off any people who were there all weekend. Um, l fortunately my plan worked. Uh, Saturday sold out a few days before the event started so I knew it was going to be a busy one. Um, as ever when they announced it sold out loads of people complained that they bought photo shoots and what have you without buying entry tickets uh it looks like i'm about to be attacked by a cat uh no she's going to stay in my windowsill uh sorry yes so as i say i knew it was going to be busy uh, i managed to leave the house about five minutes earlier than i had on friday and because the traffic was so much easier i actually arrived about half an hour earlier than friday so i got there about quarter past seven uh got into the venue fine no worries what i forgot to say on yesterday's video was um after i left and had pamela's photo shoot i picked up all my diamond passes um i had five booked uh which are oh sorry i'm being distracted by a cat uh, diamond passes are special passes you can buy for certain guests um, which are sort of a bundle um, and it means you get your photo shoot, you're guaranteed an autograph um, and then they usually have a talk attached, some of them didn't um, which otherwise you'd have to pay for and you normally get a gift of some sort either a print or a mug or something like that or mine came with prints um, I will show them to you later on tomorrow's part three um video because i've got to bring them out with me so i have to go and get them in a minute uh yes yeah, so i picked those up on friday before i left because i didn't need any of them on the saturday um so it meant i didn't have to panic about queuing for them and then queuing to get in anyway back to saturday morning um yeah got there about quarter past seven joined the queue even though i was half an hour earlier i was further back in the queue than i was on friday because it was busier um i was just literally at the very end of the first row of queuing um so there was probably in this case about 500 people in front of me which again wasn't too bad um Yes, got in fine. They actually opened the doors slightly early and I believe they let us in before the gold passes which has caused a bit of a fuss. Um, but yeah, they opened the door about 5-2. Uh, oh, it's all gone dark. Yes, I uh, got in. On my way in I was collared by a nice young man called Ollie. Hello if you're watching Miss Ollie. Um, unfortunately we were heading in different directions so we had a quick little chat but then we had to split. But it was nice meeting you um, and please feel free to come and say hi again and hopefully we'll be able to spend a bit more time chatting um, yes headed in and did the usual picked up the VQ tickets had a quick look around see where people were um, my first shoot was at 9.45 so I quickly grabbed my first autograph of the day which was with Carol Cleveland. Uh, Carol is the 7th Monty Python member. Um, she was the female who was a regular in all the shows, on the stage shows, um, in the films, although she didn't have very large roles in the films sadly. Um, and she was even in the O2 shows recently. Um, somebody I've been wanting to meet for a long time so I'm glad I finally did. Um, 
bit of confusion at her desk because um, as well as the photos to sign she was selling copies of her autobiography which I wanted so I was happy to buy one of those um, I asked how much they were and her guest assistant said they were £11 or 15 if you want them signed on top so I took that to be £15 plus £10 for the um, photo I was getting signed which was her normal price so I put down £25 she said no that will be 36 I said oh and Carol sort of looked at her and I sort of looked at her and there was a little discussion and she'd misinterpreted what Carol had said and thought it was for £11 for the book plus £15 to get it signed where of course it was £11 or if you want it signed it's £15 so fortunately I was correct so yes £25 went down um, she signed her autobiography for me um, and she signed a python photo for me um, from the Attila the Hun show which I think was a season 2 episode if memory serves um, we had a nice little chat about the O2 shows and how she still gets emotional because they knew with Terry Jones's um, medical condition that this would be the last time they ever performed together uh, but yes it was very nice um, and she happily posed for a photo with me as well so this is um, her signed autobiography or at least the inside of it this is the photo she signed and this is me and her Then it was a head round to the first photo shoot of the day which was one of my diamond pass ones and one of the biggies and that was with Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I'm sure you all know who Benedict is, um, he's Sherlock in Sherlock, he's Doctor Strange in Doctor Strange, um, he's Khan in Star Trek, he's the dragon thing in Lord of the Rings which I don't watch, <laughs> I think it was Lord of the Rings and not Hobbit, if it was a Hobbit, it was the Hobbit I think wasn't it? That silly stuff that I don't like. Um, he was in that. Um, so many other things. Um, Stephen Hawking in a thing years ago. Um, he's in the imitation game. It's Benedict Cumberbatch. You know who he is. Um, very busy. Um, which is why I got the diamond pass. Um, and pleased I did because I knew, definitely needed it because I don't think he saw many if any virtual queue tickets on Saturday. Um, Plus it also meant I got into the photo shoot straight away. So yes, went and did that. Um, very nice. Uh, we had, to, you know, it wasn't a production line. You had time for a quick hello and thank you. And yes, this is my photo shoot with him. Consulting my notes again. Um, third up on Saturday was Zoe Wanamaker. Um, Zoe's probably best known for a long running role in my family, the sitcom. Um, she was in Harry Potter, she was one of the teachers in the first, I think it was in Philosopher's Stone, Stroke Philosopher's Stone if you're American. Um, but yes, um, she was Cassandra in a couple of David Tennant, well, in Chris Eccleston and David Tennant, Doctor Who. Um, and she's done lots of things. She's Zoe Wanamaker. Uh, Love Hurts was a long running series with Adam Faith, um, who is my mum's favourite, and consequently, she's one of my mum's favourite actresses. So, I actually got two photos I got one a Doctor Who one for me, and a nice general one as a present for mum. Um, and when I explained that the photo was for my mum because she was one of her favourite actresses, um, she, she said, oh, we'll thank her for me, which I have done, and that was she was very thrilled about that. Um, Yes, so she was actually almost insisting on personalisations. People who didn't want stuff personalised had a bit of a job persuading her not to, I believe. Um, nice big signature, which she seemed very proud of. She said to me, oh, is that big enough for you? Um, not a touchy-feely person at all, um, as you'll see from a photo shoot later, and no post photos. So I was glad I'd booked a photo shoot. Um, but pleasant enough. Um, don't think she quite knew what to make of the whole thing. But yes, uh, this is a photo she signed for me. Mm. 
Next up uh, was one of my heroes. It was a photo shoot, uh, again a diamond pass that I snapped up as soon as it was announced, which was actually on my birthday this year. Um, it was John Cleese. Now, obviously, having already spoken about Carol, I'm a huge Python fan. Um, they are, to me, the best comedy thing ever. Um, when I went to the O2, one of the O2 shows, I got all emotional seeing him on stage. Um, apart from Python, obviously, Forty Towers is legendary. Uh, before Python, he was in a radio show called "I'm Sorry I Read That Again," which was just brilliant. Although he's a bit disparaging of it. Um, He's done all oh, cameos in everything. He was Q in some of the Bond films, the uh, Pierce Brosnan ones after Desmond Llewellyn died. Uh, nearly Headless Nick in Harry Potter films. Uh, he was um, Dreyfus in the Steve Martin Pink Panther remakes. Uh, oh, he's just done so many things. Physical Wonder, Clockwise, Fierce Creatures. He's John Cleese. He's just a genius. Um, didn't know what to expect. He's got a reputation that sometimes he can be a bit prickly, but he was in really good spirits. As I walked up to him in the photo shoot, he went, oh, hello, he said, and what's your name? So I told him, and said, well, nice to meet you, and had the photo, um, and this is it. So yes, thrilled to get that, um, and in a minute I'll tell you about when I met him, and that's a story and a half. Uh, but then next I headed round to um, Conliffe Hill. Uh, Conliffe's best known for playing Varys in Game of Thrones. Um, he's done a few other things. Very recently he was in Peter Kay's car share. Um, he was the Smurf uh, after a fancy dress party which most of you who have seen it will know, and some of you will go, really? That was him? Um, he did an Inside Number 9 with um, Rishi Smith and Steve Pemberton. Uh, and as I say, he's done various other things. Uh, to be honest, I thought he was a bit overpriced. He was £65, um, but that's because this is the first time he's ever done anything like this. Um, whether he does another one again we shall see and if he does whether his price will go down but I didn't want to risk it being a major and one of the best characters in Game of Thrones I wanted to meet him uh, he was very nice I you know um, congratulated him on car share and he said he had great fun doing it um, yeah very nice this is a photo he signed for me He was also a diamond guest, although I didn't get a diamond pass, and it turns out it wasn't necessary. He was whizzing through the autographs, but not in a making you feel rushed way. I think where he's his main fan base is Game of Thrones. He's not really in anything cult outside of that. Um, once you know, it was only Game of Thrones people who were after him, so it's not like he's had lots of fan bases, which made him really, 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 really busy. But yeah. As I say, he was a nice man. Um, after I met him, that's when I got my uh, autograph of Cleese. I had about an hour and a quarter before my next photo shoot. So I knew John was still at the end of his shoot that I'd just been to, but that he should be back soon. So I joined the queue with my diamond pass and was waiting. And then when they were expecting him to return, they, he had... Uh, it was inside a booth which had a snaky queuing system inside so you paid at the start of that or in my case showed my diamond pass selected your photo or whatever joined the queue and obviously at the front of the queue he was sat there signing um so we those of us who'd been waiting went into the booth and we stood there and stood there and stood there and after about 20 minutes possibly a bit longer you're probably a bit longer thinking about it. Um, one of the big bosses from Showmasters, very nice lady. It's always fun and pleasant and efficient as well. But yeah, uh, I wish I knew her name actually. Because yeah, oh, she's always one I'm pleased to see when I'm there. Um, but she came in and she apologised profusely. But John had come out of his photo shoot, headed up to the guest area green room um, and spotted that lunch was out so decided he'd stop and have something to eat. Um, she said he'd be about half an hour 
we were welcome to wait if we had photo shoots or anything we needed to get to we could leave and come straight back in um, it wouldn't be an issue decided to wait it out still had oh good best part of three quarters of an hour before the shoot so I wasn't overly concerned probably a bit longer than that I had left um, so I stood there waiting 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 and eventually John turned up uh, all smiles and waved to us all and autographing started uh, the first lady in the queue or might be the second person she might be the second person but she had a couple of books to sign um, and on both of them he actually checked the credits he obviously didn't recognize the books and he actually checked that they were legitimate and looked when they were printed and what have you before he signed them just in case that he was signing something unofficial if you like I think they were both 40 Towers books um, which made me laugh um, but when I got up to him he looked up at me and said oh hello again so he'd remember me from a shoot which was now a good couple of hours previous um, uh, he um, congratulated me on my choice of photos he said he liked it um, I, it was about the only solo python in fact I think it was the only solo python shot that wasn't from a Ministry of Silly Walks sketch um, which he's well known for not being overly keen on um, mainly because it's buggered up his hips over the years um, but yes he, he, he said he liked that photo uh, when we had, uh, I thanked him for all the joy he'd brought me over the years and he asked me what my favourite was so I said you know obviously Python but it's all great you know and obviously 40 Towers and Fish Called Wanda and everything he said some people give me the strangest answer to that question he said some people tell me it's Bond I said well yeah you were great in that too he said yes but it was four days work I mean I was only in it for a blink and a miss em. and we had a laugh and yeah, I was really pleased to have met him, you know, he, he treated me like a long lost friend almost and we had, you know, so we had a nice little chat and we shook hands and he thanked me for coming to see him and again, you know, it was just a joy to meet one of my heroes. Um, that alone would have made the weekend without all the other brilliant people I've met. But yes, John Cleese, what can I say? Um, this is a photo he signed for me. So once I got out of there, the shoot I was waiting for still had about 10 minutes to run, thankfully. So I didn't have to panic, but I headed straight over, which took a couple of well, minute tops, um, and managed to get straight in the queue. And it was Terence Stamp, um, British actor of some esteem, been big since the 60s, um, probably best known probably wrongly, um, as Zod in Superman and Superman 2. So he was the, the, the second part of the, the villainous trio who were meant to be reuniting but sadly wasn't to be. Um, see Friday's video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, he's in the Star Wars prequels um, as Senator... I can't remember his character name. Um, I'll just, let me just have a quick Google. I'll fast forward through this bit while I find it. Chancellor Valorium um, in Phantom Menace. I think he might have been in the other one of at least one of the other twos, but I might be wrong there. I can't remember. I tend to ignore the prequels. Uh, he's done lots of other stuff. He's Terrence Stamp. Um, the song Waterloo Sunset is the line Terry and Julie sat on uh, whatever it is, Waterloo. Uh, yeah, it line about Terry and Julie in Waterloo Sunset. Um, he is Terry, Julie is Julie Christie. Um, he was very quiet, um, but everybody who came up, he shook their hands. Um, depending on, ha on how you greeted him, was depending on how sort of close he came into you on um, the actual shot. But I gave him a nice big smile and said hello. And as you can see, he, he leant right into me for the shoot. Um, but yes, it's me and Terran Stamp. Then it was straight round to my next photo shoot, which was with Conliffe Hill. Um, you, again, usual procedure. Um, actually, there was a bit because I had Carol Cleveland photo shoot, which you'll see in a minute, was a 10 minute slot in the middle of Conliffe's. It was Conliffe started, then five minutes later, there was Carol's for 10 minutes, and then there was about 10 minutes left of 
Conliffe afterwards and my plan was to go to Carroll's and then just go straight from there to Conliffe's but when I got to um, they were next door to each other in E and F which was side by side when I got to e, to F where Carol was um, I found out they were running late so they recommended going to Conliffe first so I went around to Conliffe um, and it was taking ages and ages to get in eventually I got in fine very nice shoot uh, as you can see he was posed a big smile and pointing he was doing that with everyone strange seeing him with hair I know um, when I was showing mum and Dave the pictures last night it was literally two pictures after they'd seen his autograph or three pictures um, and they still didn't recognize him because he had the hair on hair on is because he had hair he only shaves for Game of Thrones um, but yes very nice photo this is it then from there headed straight round fortunately Carol was still having her shots if I had missed it it would have been a bummer but um, she was only a £10 guest and I'd got the table photo so I wasn't going to stress out about it but got round there and I was about the third person from the end to see her um, again very nice and this is a shoot with her and then it was straight onto another photo shoot which was with Zoe Wanamaker um, as I said earlier she was not a touchy feely person and when we got in I could see that she was just sort of leaning back a little bit almost resting on the backdrop but I don't think she could have without falling over but just sort of leaning back you'll see in the shot and wasn't shaking hands with anyone and you know sort of no physical contact but again thanked us for coming and gave us a big smile um, so this is my shot with Zoe uh, then I had about 40 minutes before my next shoot um, so I whizzed round to get my Benedict Cumberbatch autograph um, my number had been called my diamond pass number um, so I got in uh, similar setup to John Cleese with a big snaky queue um, took about 20 minutes to get round uh, picked a Sherlock picture which he happily signed for me he wasn't dedicating um, in order to get through as many people as possible which is fine and in fact he was the only person all weekend not to which was good compared to some previous years um, but had time to have a quick little chat it was you know very quick but um, I just told him I'd seen him in Frankenstein at the National Theatre um, and now it was probably the best bit of theatre that I'd ever seen and he said yeah it was, it was a special thing to do um, thanked me for coming but yes, a, a brief but very pleasant uh, meeting with Benedict. So yes, this is the autograph. So then I headed back to a photo shoot area where I had my photo with Emily Kinney, um, who I'd met the previous day, uh, Beth in Walking Dead, main reason, if you haven't watched yesterday's. Uh, Again, a, a quick but pleasant experience. Um, Please, she wasn't a keep away from me type person. Uh, but this is me with lovely Emily Kinney. From there, it was um, back to the autograph area for Mark Strickson, who played Turlow in Peter Davison era Doctor Who. Um, he's one of these people, if you've seen my videos from previous years, who I met way back at my very first con, Collector Mania 7, when they had a big Doctor Who reunion, but I wasn't getting photos with people at that event, so I've slowly been mopping them up and meeting them again to get photos with. Um, he lives in New Zealand, so he's not over here very often, so at last I've managed to get him. Um, we had a nice little chat about his travels. Um, he signed a picture for me. And guest assistant took a couple of photos for me. This is them.
His guest assistant was actually the girl who, if you remember from last year, if you've seen last year's videos, um, is a fellow Molotov jukebox Natalie, Natalia Tenner's band fan and actually flashed at me uh, in one of the photo queues because we were wearing the same t-shirt. She's a crew member. She had her t-shirt on underneath her blue crew t-shirt and she sort of lifted that up to show me the t-shirt. wasn't quite as exciting as it sounded but it was a, an enjoyable and laughable experience. Um, so I just leaned over to her and said Molotov jukebox. She's like, oh yeah! Um, just in case you see this. Hello. Uh, yeah, so that was Mark Strickson. Again very pleasant. Uh, then from Alistair... Alistair? I was looking at the wrong line there. Um, then from Mark it was... Uh, I had one more Saturday only guest to sort of pick off. I had to get Tevin Stamps autograph but um, he was a slow signer so I was still waiting for him to get to my number so I started picking off a couple of Sunday guests or all weekend guests um, and first up I decided to get um, another of the Diamond Pass guests um, Natalie Dormer uh, I'm a huge fan of Natalie's ever since I first saw the Tudors where she played Anne Boleyn um, then she was in the Fades which again if you've seen a couple of my previous videos you've seen me raving about as one of the best sci-fi TV series ever um, and was sadly lost on BBC3 so not many people saw it so it didn't get a second series which was a real bummer because it was magnificent um, so yeah she was in that She's best known now um, as Marjorie Tyrrell, or Tyrell, however you meant to say it, in Game of Thrones. Um, she's done lots of other stuff as well, both on telly and on film. She's in Elementary, which is one of the few things I haven't actually seen her in. Um, she was in the first um, Captain America film briefly. She's in Rush. Uh, she was the lead in a film called The Forest, a horror film. Um, yeah, she's done lots of other stuff as well. The Scandalous Lady W um, was a one-off. She was on. She was the lead in on BBC Two last year. And yes, as I say, she's one of my favourite actresses. Um, she was initially announced about, uh, I think it was the last Earl's Court London Comic Con, um, and had to cancel last minute because she had to go and shoot Thrones. Um, back then, she was. I think she was going to be twenty-five pounds, um, and my intention I was. I think I was going to get four or five from her from various roles. I was going to get a Tudor's pick, a Thrones pick, a Fade's pick and then I think a general one. Um, when she was announced for this one I was thrilled but she was £65. Um, so sadly it meant I would only be able to get one pick. Um, I actually got a diamond pass which was the pick of a photo of a talk which I couldn't get to because um, it clashed with other stuff. But yes I decided to get her pick, uh, for autograph on the Saturday. I had the photo on the Sunday because it was a good excuse to see her on two days because I say she's one of my favourite actresses. She's gorgeous. Um, I had hoped um, to get a, a general shot of her sort of from one of her magazine shoots signed. I've got one in my room but it's buried amongst under a load of crap um, so I couldn't fish it out so I hope they'd have one on the table for her sadly um, they only had they had a load of Thrones ones, a couple of Tudors um, oh Hunger Games she was in I forgot to mention that they had a couple of Hunger Games shots a couple of elementary ones and I think one from Captain America um, in the end I was divvering but in the end I, I went for a Tudors one since that was the first thing I saw her in um, she happily signed it for me. As soon as I walked up there, she reached up and shook my hand. Um, I told her she was one of my favourite actresses and she thanked me. Told her I was going to see her in a play she's in, in towards the end of this year. I'm going to see her it in November in London, uh, Venus in Furs. Um, she thanked me, said, please, I was coming, his bums on seats. And then she said, well, I'll see you then and shook my hand again as I left. Um, lovely to meet her. <sighs> um, this is the photo she signed for me. Uh, then I had a little wander around and then decided to pick off another all weekend guest which is Alistair Petrie. Um, main reason I wanted to meet him is he was in Sherlock. He was um, Watson's former sergeant or corporal or what whatever it was um, in the wedding episode. Uh, he's in Star Wars now in the new ones. Um, 
and he's done lots of other stuff as well. You, you'd probably recognise him. Um, we had a nice little chat just about the con. He said, you know, how are you getting on? I said, oh, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm actually ahead. Uh, you were on tomorrow's list. And he said, oh, well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow now. I've got to work. So I said, oh, it was a good job I got you today then, wasn't it? Um, and we had a nice little chat. Um, and he happily posed for a photo with me. Um, and again, the crew member took a couple. Um, so this is a photo he signed from Sherlock. And these are the photos with. And then, again, I picked off another one for all weekend, um, which was Pilo Azbek. I might be pronouncing that all wrong. He, it's a Danish name. Um, he is currently best known uh, for playing Evian Greyjoy in Game of Thrones, who's sort of a new, horrible, nasty, mean character that we all love to hate. Um, if you don't watch the series, you'll know who he is. Uh, he was also in Bergen. He co-presented the Eurovision Song Contest a few years back, and he's done lots of other stuff as well. Very nice man, very different from his character. Um, he was very busy all day, but luckily I managed to grab a spot where he only, there was only a couple of people ahead of me. Um, so I quickly nabbed him and got him. We had a quick little chat. Apparently his brother's name is, or his middle name is Martin. Um, his, his mother's French apparently, so his middle name is, um, Pilu's middle name is Philip. And his brother's middle name is Martin. Um, yeah, we had a quick little chat, signed a photo for me. Sadly, he was no post photos and I hadn't booked a shoot with him, which was, I'm a bit gutted about because it would have been nice um, to have a photo with him because it looks like he's turning out to be a pretty major character in Thrones. But yes, this is a photo he signed. Then, uh, it was coming up to five o'clock and I had my last shoot of the day, which was with Trisha Helfer, who I met on the Friday. Um, yeah, again, just a normal, traditional shoot. In, smile, grin. She thanked, again, she thanked me for coming. Um, she's very tall, but very pretty. Um, this is the shoot. By then, um, I could finally get Terence Stamp's autograph, so I went to that. Again, he was very quiet, but um, he sort of thanked me for coming. Um, and again, quite a limited choice of photos. I quite like just a general shot of him, but in the end went for a general Zod one from Superman. Um, and this is it. So that was it, headed home. Um, left about, must have been about 25 past five-ish, and got home about half seven, so it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, that was it for Saturday. Don't think I'd need to... Oh, when I was waiting for one of my shoots, can't remember which one, but a um, nice young man called Daniel uh, came and had a quick chat with me. Um, so, hello Daniel, nice to meet you. Um, hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, yes, I think that's it for Saturday. So, see me in part three for Sunday.